Hi, I'm Liam. Welcome back. Uh, we're back on the box that the tech collector sent us. Uh, I'm going to try and get through a couple in this episode. We'll probably look at just some like uh, the Xbox controllers, the Xbox One, maybe the 360s. I don't really have any parts for 360s, but we'll have a quick look at them. So run the intro. Let's try and get through some more of this stuff. Right, so in the last episode, we fixed Buzz Lightyear. It is done. Uh, let's pull these controllers out. Uh, it's a 360 controller. Like I say, I don't have parts for them, uh, but we'll have a quick look at them. We have got an Xbox One controller. We'll take a look at that. Another 360 wireless. We'll have a quick look at that one. Uh, a PS3. Um, that's probably the uh, conductive strip inside that's probably knackered on that, but... We'll look at that and confirm it. I don't even, it doesn't even feel like it's got the motors in it. Yeah, it's not even a dual shock controller. So that one's probably not worth much anyway. Uh, I'm not sure how much 360 remotes are, but let's have a quick look at these. We're gonna plug these into the PC and use a gamepad tester to test these. So let's, let's start with the Xbox One because I've got parts for this. Let's plug this in and see what it says. All right, so here we are in Gamepad Tester. We have the Xbox One controller connected. Bring up all that rubbish. All right, so here you can see Xbox controller connected. It says 360 controller, but it is the Xbox One. Uh, there's a little bit of stick drift on the right. Oh dear, yeah, no, that's going on its own. So yeah, that's so right hand stick. Left hand stick's fine. Let's test the circularity of it. So the left stick, not too bad. Right stick that's all over the place. Circularity is not too bad, it's just that drifting up on its own there. Flick it down and it just wants to drift up on its own. Okay, trigger buttons. Those buttons are working. How's all my A, B, X, Y, fine. D-pad, fine. Analog stick buttons pushing down, fine. Yeah, menu buttons, everything else is fine. So it's all right apart from that right one that's, yeah, drifting up like that. All right, we'll go through this quick because there's like loads of videos of taking these controllers apart. Take these wires off, unsolder these. So I'm going to pop this board off. Grey, black, red, black. Grey, black, red, black. That's that board out. We've definitely got liquid in there somewhere. So it's making me wonder. Yeah, there's a little bit of liquid on the board there where my thumb is. So it's making me wonder if anything's got inside here. Thinking, do I just take the uh, potentiometers off, give it a clean? Let's try that first. Take this potentiometer off. It was just sliding up, wasn't it? Which will be this one. See if we can get this off of here. Ah, let's get some fresh solder on. Should make it easier to get off. Ah, I'm just going to use a bit of solder wick on there, see if we can get this off. Oops. Never clear the holes with solder wick, I'm just trying to pull it out from the other side. Get my tweezers into the potentiometer. There we go, that has popped out. 
see if we can clean our holes now. Bit of flux on there always helps. There we go. Cleaned out nicely. Let's get a cotton bud and get that flux, flux off while it's nice and warm. There we go, nice and clean. Much easier to get the flux off while it's warm. All right, let's have a quick look into. Uh, let's have a look, quick look at this. It does look wet in there, doesn't it? I'll get some light in there, zoom in a bit more. It does look a little worn at the top. You can see that's wet there, can't you? I think a bit of that has broken off of there. Oh, I'm just going to replace this with like a whole new one. Right, let's pop this back in and see what happens. So I'm just going to try and pop that back through them holes. Make sure I'm going to squeeze, make sure this one fits in. I think I've had trouble with these ones before that I got from AliExpress. There we go, that's pushed in all right. Now let's quickly resolder this back up. Well, I'm just going to put this back in its shell and test it. Right, so back on gamepad tester. What is B16 showing a one there? What is that? I don't know. Uh, it's got a little bit of stick drift on the right still there. See, and these, these ones I replace them with, I just don't like them because they just go outside the barriers. Oh, it's not too bad. Up's a bit too high. Still a little bit of drift on that one. I think it might just be this actual stick. Stick's not quite going back. If I push the stick back down, it's there. So I think that whole stick needs changing. And the left one really, it just doesn't, it's not going back to centre. I can move it left and right and it's kind of like stays there. Very tiny. But it's not just, it's just not springing back to centre. Right, so let's go the whole hog on air now and replace all of the sticks. And obviously be careful because it's very easy to hoover up that tiny little cap as that capacitor. And just in from China, from AliExpress, the AliExpressials. Um, I haven't had much luck with um, these. These, are, these aren't OEM, these are like third party. They've got Alps on the side, but they're obviously fakes. So you can usually tell from the bottom because the Plastic's different, that's got like a cross pattern on it. You know, it's like a square pattern with bits and bobs. That's just like more flat. Uh, but I've not bought from this company before, so I thought I'd try these ones, because all these ones I'd buy 
seem to seem to give me like a square a square sort of uh, pattern when you use the gamepad tester and of course they come with all the pins bent look at that one look how bent there they are yeah Nothing we can't fix. You kind of like want to make sure they're all straight so they all line up when you uh, go to put them in. Movements of them is okay. All right, so let's just see if we can get this lined up into this one. never go in nicely first time always got to move a few pins around that side's going in There we go, once you've got them lined up, you want to make sure that's kind of like pushed as far down as possible. Make sure it looks flat to the board. Just going to do this one pin here a minute. Just so I can push that side up from the bottom and just make sure that one's on and the joystick is looking level. Looks nice and square to the board, like 90 degrees. Well, I'm just going to do the rest of these and the other analog stick as well. We'll put it back together and stick it back in the tester. See what happens. All right, back again in Gamepad Tester. I hate the fact that whenever you move the mouse, it's moving my cursor on the screen and everything. How do you stop it from doing that? Up does the volume, down turns the volume down. Drives me nuts. But if we look now at this test circularity, it is all over the shop. It's, it's rubbish. These analog sticks are rubbish. The top left bit's all right. Oh no, it's not. It dips down there. Oh, and then goes out again. Oh, and then it's back again. Sits on the edge and then goes back in. But yeah, see what I mean about the square patterns? We should get a, you know, something around the edge like that. Yeah, so I am constantly moving this round and round. I'm not stopping, but you can see. When it hits the corners, the 45 degrees and 90 degrees, it kind of like sticks to it before it starts moving again. It's just jerky. It's just rubbish analog sticks. See, that's jumping all around there until you get to this side. Then it just like moves nicely, but then stops again there. I'm moving this thing up and down slightly, and there's no movement. And when you're playing a game, you know, when you're sort of trying to aim, 
with your right stick. It's just no good. Absolute rubbish. That's another shop on AliExpress I will not be buying these from. So there is now a recalibration tool on the Xbox. In um, game accessories, you go into the controller. Uh, I think it's click on the three dots, go down and say calibrate controller. Um, I did this with this and um, it worked out to be okay. It did a couple of weird things at first. I mean, the left analog stick up went down and down went up. And um, yeah, it didn't work that great. So I don't think the, the the calibration tool on the Xbox is that great. But after doing it a few times, I pretty much got it uh, perfect. Um, so yeah, so this Xbox controller uh, was pretty good in the end. I didn't film it because I was fiddling around with it so much. I didn't film the calibration. Uh, but trust me, it worked fine. It's going back to the tech collector. So if it's not working, it'll tell you. <laughs> So yeah, if you have trouble with your Xbox calibration, you can now um, you can now change it on an Xbox One. All right, let's have a look at this Oogler's toy. I have no idea of what it's worth, what it does. But are we thinking battery corrosion on this one? Let's open it up and have a look. Yeah, we've got some corrosion down in there. Uh, what's this? Three double A's and three triple A's. Right, three double A's. These contacts look perfectly fine down in there. Now I've got three triple A's. Oh, I just tested all of these. They all read 1.5 volts. Let's just put them in and see what happens. Yeah, so when you shut this, you've got some metal contacts on the back of there that make contact back there. So that needs to be shut properly. Flick it on. And dead. No idea how it works or what it does. But nothing is happening. Let's measure our voltage voltage on these contacts. So four point five volts, which is correct for those batteries. Why is it showing 1.6 now? It's reducing 1 1.5, 1 1.4. Oh, maybe something's charging up in there and not doing anything. Let's try and see what our contacts are. Well, we're just down here. That's 4.6 volts. So those, those batteries are new, so they're good. So I do think we got, when we close this door, it's contacting that. Because that looks like capacitors discharging. So if I close it up, that will charge the capacitors. When I open it again, there we go, 4 volts, 3.9 and slowly going down. So that is capacitors discharging. So we are taking this apart because it is getting power even though that terminal is a bit manky, rusty power is getting into it let's take this apart and see if we can see anything just six screws in the back Those screws do not want to fall out of there. Okay, what have we got? There's a spring on his head. Spring just came out from up in there. That's why you open these so carefully. We see we have a wire. 
sellotape together. That's not how you fix something. But that is just going to the speaker. And we have a loose wire there, which has just come out of that speaker. I was hoping it was come off here, but it's not. I'm going to start by soldering this together. We'll get a little bit of uh, heat shrink tubing over that as well. Right, we, always, we always tin our wires up first. Just makes soldering them together much easier because they're preloaded with solder. Try and get this in shot so you can see. We're just going to put the wires together now. Little touch, melt the solder, and that's together, and hopefully that will just slide over there. Like so. We'll just get a bit of hot air on that to melt that down. So there we go, that's that wire sorted out. That is going to have nothing to do with that's going to have nothing to do with the power coming through here. Um, why is that reading half a volt? Is that still the capacitors charged up in here? Sure that, as you can see, is just going down to the speaker wire. So this should have nothing to do with it while well, it's not working. But I'm just going to, for the sake of it, put it on there and turn it on. Still nothing. Well, that didn't take long. A quick Google, and you've got to pull his tail. Uh, let me do zoom. Bye -bye. And he's saying goodbye now, because I've just done it. You pull his tail. There we go, back together. Hello. <laughs> Off, scaring the cats. Ah, right, that is working. Let's get my batteries back. I will give the springs and contacts a little clean down in there. You can view my previous video of when I did the uh, Buzz Lightyear. They just need a bit of clean up. A little bit of sandpaper. On there. Job done. All right, cleaned. Let's put it on the dump hole. I was just thinking maybe he sent me this to me because it had no sound. In which case, that speaker wire probably wasn't connected properly. So maybe that's why I sent it. I don't know. Alright, two Nintendo DS's. Uh, I think it's only sent the one charge, really. Oh no, that was other charges for that one. Is that the charger for that? I believe it is. Alright, power on. We got a red light on the front. Ooh, that was a kick. turns on and off. Yeah, you get a couple of little crackles. Is anything on the screen come on? Lights out. So try to turn on, it goes straight back off again. Is that a problem with one of the screens? I'm thinking, I'm not sure, because I haven't really worked on the uh, Nintendo DS's because they're an absolute pain. I think that might be a screen issue. And if that one's, well, that one's flashing. Could be that, or it could just be the top one. Yeah, I think it's got some charge in the battery as well. Just unplugged it, but it's doing the same. What is the 3DS doing? I 
plug that in, flip the switch on. Got no lights on the front. Oh, press the power button and we got a flashing red light. We did. Nothing now. That looks a bit rusty and dirty. Oh, plugged it in. Now it's showing it's plugged in. Hmm. Now we've got a light saying it's plugged in. Power light the red. Oh, that clicked. Can't see if that's flashing or not. No, it sounds similar as the other one, but the screen isn't flashing. Let's turn all these lights off again. But you're getting the click. Yeah, no, no screen's flashing. But you're getting the click on the other one like it's clicking off or something. And we have got damage over here. Got a lot of big crack in the corner. I'm not sure whether that's been repaired or not. But if it has, have they or has someone been here before that wireless switch doesn't move over? So someone glued it or not put it back together properly. Right, let's take the power out of there. Uh, maybe the, it wasn't plugged in properly before. Because that flashing is when it's on battery power. Maybe that's just to say the battery's low. So I think this is going to be the same issue again. Ribbon cable, top screen. Or one, it could be bottom screen actually. None of them are flashing. Got a feeling that needs to come out. Uh, what is that? Somebody has been in here. Uh, it's not connected to anything. I think he did. He did say one of them needed a ribbon cable. Hang on. That's right from that side. They're the they're the shoulder buttons. And the shoulder buttons flex cables. Hmm. <laughs> this one's over this side is ripped off as well. Alright, so I'm probably gonna have to take this apart just to see what I need. Someone's butchered this. Is that one even in there correctly? That's not even incorrectly, is it? That looks in at an angle. Not even in at all. Let's see if we can reseat this or get it in properly. Whether well, they've absolutely damaged it. Right, that's definitely in now. Just want to see if that makes any difference whatsoever. Although whoever's been in this before hasn't taken much care of what they're doing. So I'd be surprised if they haven't damaged that ribbon cable. Right, plugged it back in, Ooh, holding the battery in place. So we get a red power light on. It's exactly the same clicking off. Now I'm going to leave these two for now. I think I'll do these in a separate video. And um, I did just put this back together, and it turned on once. 
Only the bottom screen, but now it won't turn on again. I'm now getting the blue light when I turn it on. I don't know if you can see that, yeah, the blue light. I'm getting nothing on screen. But I put it back together, turned it on, and um, the bottom screen come on. It wasn't doing that click anymore. And as you can see, the blue light's staying on. But yeah, I've got no screen and no sound. Add screen and sound, bottom screen and sound. So I don't know what's going on with that. Yes, yeah, so I think I'll do them in a separate video because they're going to need um, new cables. I don't know if they're going to need new screens or it's just a cable. But we'll put them aside for now and we'll get on to the um, Nintendo, the GameCube, and see why the port one's not working. Hopefully that'll be nice and easy. All right, so here it is. Just going to set it up, plug it in, and uh, confirm the controls only working on all the ports and not port one. Right, so I've put it in port one. I'm trying to film the, putting that in and the screen. So that's the controller, I'm on the screen now. Obviously nothing, the up and down arrows don't do anything. That's not doing anything on the screen. All right, let's switch it over into port two. Nobody can see that's moving up and down now with the buttons and with the Joystick. Port three. Oop. Port three again. That's fine. Over to port four. And yeah, port four is fine. Right, so let's turn this off. Let's see if we can see anything. Obviously this port is fine. That's in focus, you've got three pins on the top there, two pins on the bottom, so that looks absolutely fine. But can we see anything in here? We might not be able to get might not be able to get enough light in here to see. I'll have to get a microscope on it. It's got my little cheap microphone microscope on here. I'm just going to see if I can uh, look down in there. If I see anything I'll turn the microscope on. Well, I'll turn it on anyway. It's got a light on the bottom as well. I can turn on and shine down in there. Let's record that because it looks alright. So this is port one. Oop. Yeah, that's fine. Let's go to port two, see if there's any difference. Yeah, looks about the same. Try and view the underside of it. I think that looks all right. Over to port two. Just trying to balance this on here. I think they look the same. I will we'll try and give them a quick clean. Can I see if I can, can I get a cotton bud in there? Bit of IPA, isopropyl alcohol, 99.9%. Don't want to force it in there and break it at all. Uh, best thing to do in some of these situations is just put your isopropyl alcohol in there. I'll just put it in and out a few times. Let's plug it in and see if that's made any difference. I'm suspecting not. No. No, 
No, that has made no difference. Right, let's see if I can take one of these apart. Which I've never done before. Let's see if we can see what's going on in there. Where's the screws down in there? What screws have we got down there? I have no idea what they are down there. I can't even see properly. Oh, so you need a game bit driver. Yeah, I don't have any of them. That's ruined it. That's ruined my fun. Actually, I think this is working. I've got a four mil, four mil nut bit on there. Just by pushing it down, holding it to the side. Yeah, that's loosening it. It's not slipping. And do that. Last one. Yeah, that's actually working very well. Ah. I think that has got them out. That's all for them. Nice. Right, so that worked better than I imagined. Who needs a game bit? Oh, do we flip it over? Does the top come off? Does the bottom come off? I'm sure there's no wires attached. Good. Alright, so I somehow I need to get this board out, which looks like it's screwed in through the back of there. Just lift out, yes. That ribbon cables, that ribbon cable soldered onto there. But should I don't want to pull it out there because that looks like a pain in the ass to get back on. I'm just going to have a quick look around this board. It all looks perfectly fine. I doubt there's any going to be anything wrong with that soldering on there. I'll try and pull this out. Am I going to be able to get that back in afterwards? It's just in an awkward place to get your fingers. Let's see if we've got continuity from our pins at the front to the uh, where they're soldered onto on the back. Let's move this out of the way. <coughs> All right, mold meter in continuity. Try and get that on that bottom pin. This is going to be awkward. So yeah, hopefully I'm on that bottom pin there. Fine. Try and get it on that middle pin. Fine. Next pin. Fine. Top left. Fine. Top middle. Fine. And the last one, fine. So it's definitely coming through this part of the board. While we're here as well, let's check our voltage in our battery. This solder looks a bit weird. Three volts in the battery, that's fine, we don't have to change that. I think all these connections are eventually going down to this ribbon cable. Let's have a look. So we've got some of these that are ground from the controller pins over to there. So that's a ground. Yeah, so those two are grounds, opposite corners. And where are these other ones going? They're going through the board through vias. They're coming up here and coming up through vias underneath this ribbon cable. So I wonder if it's this cable or the connection not getting to the cable. Let's have a quick look. 
that pin's coming up over there. That one's coming up, that's a ground. That one. Oh, actually it turns a blue light on that one. Right, let's try and test this ribbon cable. One's fine. Pin two, fine. Pin three, fine. Pin four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven and well, right, so everything's getting through here and getting down to there. So is it something on the main board? So we know we've got continuity from the pins on here to the board where they're soldered on there, and we know we've got continuity from these pins to this ribbon cable, and we know we've got continuity from this ribbon cable down to there, where it plugs into the main board. And to be honest with you, it doesn't really look like there's anything on here that can go wrong. Uh, didn't really want to take all this apart, but I think I might have to. Right, so, and I guess I'm just going to take these screws out from around the side. Oh, where did that one go? Lost the screw down there already. See, this ain't, isn't too bad to take apart, is it? So that pin looks a bit tarnished down there. Inside the connector looks fine, but what is that? What's going on down there? Is that a bit of corrosion or something like that? Not too sure. Let's check some continuity looks like it's going to be that one down to there yes yeah, that's that is fine that's getting there that one though that doesn't seem to be getting there pin three is not getting down to there so that looks like the connection for pin three that's fine there, but it's not coming down. It's blocking the light now. Yeah, that should be coming down to here. It looks like it should be coming down to there. I wonder if that is corrosion under there or... Hmm. Don't really want to be taking that connector off of there. Because that will be a pain. Something going on down in there, isn't there? Let's see if I'm going to throw some IPA down in there and get a brush on it. Right, let's try and get the microscope on that, see if we can see anything better. Nah, let me record this on the microscope. I think I can see it already. Yeah, that's recording. So right, there's that corrosion, or what looks like corrosion, what we were talking about. Just there. And look there. That. That there looks like the trace has gone. 
Oh, it does it. Is that broken the trace? What is that? I wonder if there's anything else under there now. It does make me wonder if something's gone under there and eaten away at that copper trace. I think it's eaten a bit of it there. Okay. There's got to be a break from between there and there somewhere. So hopefully the easiest way to sort this out would be with a bit of enamel wire. Pulled all this enamel wire out of transformer, it's literally 0 0.01 of a mil. Hopefully this will slide underneath the port. Might be a bit fiddly, but because it's got enamel on it, it's not going to um, It's not going to short out underneath. And when I heat out with the soldering iron, the enamel will burn off. Am I going to get a soldering iron in there without burning these bits of plastic? Turn it around the other way, just so it's maybe a little bit better for me to see what I'm doing. All right, let's get the soldering iron on with a really fine tip on it. Try and get something quite long in there as well, like that. That might do it, actually. That one in there. Soldier and I've got set to 400 degrees, because that should melt the enamel wire. Just get a little bit of solder on the end of there. We're out of focus up there. Get a little bit of blob of solder on there. Now I've got to try and get in this point without mounting this plastic. I'm going to come in, come in from the top. Can't really rest my hand on anything, so it's a bit shaky down here. Hopefully this is going to melt the enamel wire. Solder it on. Uh, get a bit of flux down in there as well. The reason you get a shaky hand is you can't really rest it on anything, so I'm coming in directly straight down from the top. That little tug, see that's not connected still. Let's put the temperature of the soldering up to 430. We are definitely connected now. Right, so we want to connect it to that point there.
get some solder on the point. Get some solder on that test point, and now let's try and rub the wire. Melt that enamel away. And stick down. Are you stuck down? Yes, you are. Wiggle this wire and it should snap off. Like so. Alright, let's try and give this a quick clean up because if it comes off now while I'm brushing it, we know it's not connected very well, don't we? I will brush in the the way of the wires going. Use a cotton bud as well. Cotton bud soaked in IPA. Get this little wire as well. Don't want that shortened down to that ground plane below. There it is, I don't know if you can see it on there. <laughs> tiny, tiny wire. Alright, so now from when we go from continuity, what was it, pin three? That one there, it should come all the way down to this fire. And it does. No, oh, no, that one isn't it. There we go. It's the camera ang angle that makes it look off now. But it is this pin. So you can see it's coming through here. So we know it, our wire has done its job. Now I'm fully going to put this back together. Because I believe that was the problem. 99.9% .9 sure that is a problem. Uh, plug this cable back in while I'm here. Because that will be a lot easier I think. There we go. Right. Don't need to see me put it all back together. You watch me take it apart. Okay, we're ready. Power. Blue light. Right, so is it going to work? Right, we're on HDMI 2. Turn it on. Well, we're still turning on, which is good. And are we going to go down? Of course we're going to go down. I wonder, yeah works perfectly you can see it's in port one working fine so we check the next port just in case port two focus yeah we're still working got a sound everything is absolutely fine Right, so there we go, that's it. Um, I think I've done everything. I'm not gonna bother with the Xbox 360 controllers. Um, I haven't got the parts for it and it's probably not worth buying the parts for it. Uh, the PlayStation 3 controller, yeah, the PlayStation 3 controller seemed fine. Um, so that's everything fixed in the box now, apart from those two Nintendo DS's. But I'm gonna strip them down, see what parts I need, whether I need screens or not, or whether it's just gonna be like the uh, ribbon cables. Actually, I think no. It will need it will need a top screen that top screen ribbon cable has gone so it's going to need a new screen i need to price that up uh, but the gamecube easy fix in the end um, the xbox one controller after i tried calibrating on the xbox a few times that was working fine but that's just a analog stick replacement the ooglies i didn't even know how to turn that on until pulled its towel um, but the sound definitely wouldn't work because the wire was pulled out the middle um, and buzz buzz was so long ago now i can't remember um i've had i have had this stuff now for like a month or two and i need to send it back to the tack collector so join me next time it might be the nintendo 3ds or the other nintendo uh, ds um we'll see might fit something in between it's christmas soon and things are getting very busy so i hope you enjoyed this one hope you've learned something 
Uh, please like, please comment, please subscribe, and uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.